Welcome to Sai Tech Info channel my dear students. In this tutorial I will be discussing about the polarization under the topic wave optics. Polarization it is the phenomenon of restricting the vibrations restricting the vibrations in just one direction in the transverse plane let me consider the transverse waves the light is progressing like this in this direction that is along x axis and uh, let me say this is the y axis and this is the z axis so x axis y axis z axis so the light is traveling from the origin along the x axis now they vibrate at perpendicular plane to the progress of the light and that's why they are called transverse vibrations so they will vibrate in the perpendicular direction because this is 90 degree they can also vibrate along y axis so this is also 90 degree so it means uh, let me have a circular plane like this where I can have the vertical vibration along y axis and along z axis this is also vertical vibration and another vibration takes place like this so it is along the plane the perpendicular plane so let me view from here okay so that you are able to get your vibration in this way that is it will vibrate like this it will vibrate in this direction it will vibrate in this direction it will vibrate in this direction right so this is the frontal view that is as though we are looking from here okay right so this is the circular plane and perpendicular plane to the progress of the light this is the progress of the light so this is the perpendicular plane okay right now when such perpendicular perpendicularly vibrated light is passing through a prism called Nicole prism a particular plane of vibration is separated okay so let me say that is let me select only two vibrations here so this is the progress of the light uh, one light is I mean one set of waves vibrating in this way and the another set in this way so when it is passed through a prism called nickel prism the light which is vibrating in a perpendicular manner will get separated in this way so these are all perpendicular plane polarized light and what about this this will be separated in this way as plane polarized light so this is the normal light and this is the these two are plain polarized light okay 
such plain polarized light or lights or uh, that is optically sensitive so when they are passed through any optically active solution like sugar solution the plain polarized light is rotated and that phenomenon is called optical activity when it is rotated towards the right it's called dextro rotatory when the plane polarized light is uh, rotated uh, that is uh, towards left that is uh, anti clockwise then it's called that is the levo rotatory okay so that part is that is the optical activity but we are going to focus on the plane polarized light here okay right so have you noted down right and there are some light which are not polarized and they are called unpolarized light okay take down so what is unpolarized light it is a transverse vibration where all these vibrations are set in all possible directions so it is the normal light so the unpolarized light it will be vibrating in all directions unpolarized light whereas plane polarized light they vibrate in a perpendicular plane only okay right the if the polarized light or the vibrations of the wave are present in just only one direction in a plane and uh, we know it is said to be polarized so when it is uh, directed in a single uh, plane or i mean one direction in a plane it is called linearly polarized light when it is polarized in a particular plane then it's called plane polarized light so linear linearly polarized light okay linearly polarized light this uh, you can use uh, yes or is it but according to indian english we use yes so linearly polarized light they vibrate linearly polarized light vibrate in just one direction in a plane okay right whereas uh, in a uh, direction in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation that is understood perpendicular to the direction of propagation propagation means advancement of light propagation okay of light and that type of waves are called linearly polarized light waves whereas when the vibrations are set at all points at all time but they lie in the same plane they are called plane polarized light plane polarized light that is vibrating they vibrate at all points at all times lie in the same plane okay so such type of waves are called plane polarized light light wave okay so this can be schematically represented in this way also so a polarized light can be simply represented as that is this is vibrating away from the paper or board below 
the paper. So it is above and below the plane of the paper. And another vibration, another vibration, another vibration, another vibration. So all these vibrations are taking place that is in the third dimension. Assuming that this is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is z-axis. So x, y, z. So this vibrations are taking place along z dimension. Are you able to understand? Or this can also be represented in this way simply. That is along y-axis. Okay. In a particular axis they vibrate. So this is also called plane polarized light. Now how we can uh, represent the unpolarized light that is a normal light. The normal light can be represented in this way. That is it vibrate along the y axis also along the z axis. So for z axis you can put a point and for y axis you can put the vertical vibration. So this is the simple representation. So this is the unpolarized light. Do you understand? So I have indicated with x and y only along I mean y and z along x axis. So this is unpolarized light. So they vibrate vertically and also it vibrate like this. So it is above the plane of the board, below the plane of the board. Do you understand this? So this is the unpolarized light. Are you able to follow? Right. Now when it is separated by using the Nicole prism, we can separate in this way. How we can select the one set of vibration in this way. Otherwise you can put here. Okay. So in this way also this can be represented. So these are this is unpolarized and this is polarized light. Do you understand this? Okay, right. And this is the direction of propagation. This is the direction of propagation. Uh, normally Transverse vibrations are polarized. Please note down this point. That is, transverse vibrations are polarized. Transverse vibrations are polarized. So it means that is, longitudinal vibrations are not polarized. Is it not? So longitudinal vibrations cannot be polarized because they are symmetrical about the direction of propagation. You know the difference between the that is longitudinal waves and transverse waves. So in the case of longitudinal wave they vibrate in this way. Okay. The to and fro action or the vibration is set along the direction of propagation assuming that this is the direction of propagation so they vibrate in this way okay so this is longitudinal vibration or wave whereas transverse vibration they vibrate in this way that is vibrate okay so this is called transverse vibration so here you have crust and trough okay so this is transverse vibration or transverse waves. So sound waves are longitudinal whereas the light waves are transverse vibrations. And that is why transverse vibrations, that is light waves can be polarized. Do you understand this? Right. Then now the plane of vibration, the plane containing, take down this, plane of vibration. So the plane of vibration, it is the plane containing the direction of vibration. It is the plane containing, it is the plane containing the direction of vibration. The direction of vibration. 
okay it is a plane containing the di direction of vibration and also the direction of wave propagation direction and direction of wave propagation propagation what do you mean by propagation advancement progress or proceeding let me say uh, this is the vibration okay so this can be represented in this way do you understand so this is the plane of vibration okay and what about so this is the we can say the horizontal one like this and along the so let me try to draw the xy plane y z plane x z plane this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis so x y z so the plane will be in this manner so if it is vibrating like this now we can arrive at the plane in this way so draw a parallel line to z axis okay i hope now you should be able to understand this so the vibration will be taking place along the z axis as i already told you so it will vibrate i'll show you as a smaller one okay do you understand this is the perspective view of plane vibration plane of vibration right and that is simply represented in this way as dot as though one vibration is above the plane of the board the other one is below the plane of the board do you understand so this is called plane vibration and we can also show the plane of vibration along y axis also okay so let us try to so draw this so along y axis okay so this is also plane polarized right or plane of polarization so in this case you can easily draw the plane in this way do you understand right polarization actually confirms the transverse nature of light so polarization this is a very important point polarization confirms the transverse nature of light okay right a uh, polarizer is the device what is polarizer take down polarizer so it is the device that polarizes unpolarized light polarized light okay when it is passed when light is passed through it so the common polarizers are you can have these examples like a uh, tourmaline crystal tourmaline crystal actually that is it is cut uh, in such a way the plane contains its optic axis so when unpolarized light is incident when it when the unpolarized light falls on it normally then it allows only 
those electric vibrations to pause which are parallel to the op that axis. So it is cut, this tourmaline crystal is cut in such a way that in such a way that the plane contains is the plane contains its optic axis optic axis so it is cut along the optical axis optic axis right and uh, the next example can be quartz crystal quartz crystal right okay so polaroids are the commercial sheet in the form of a circular disc that makes use of the property of selective absorption to produce intense beam of polarized light that is called polaroid take down So polaroids are thin commercial sheet in the form of circular disc. This makes use of the property of selective absorption. for what to produce intense beam of light polarized light mm -hmm. so polaroid cameras are popular and the polarized goggles are very popular nickel prism is also used as an optical device for producing polarized light. Actually it consists of two pieces. It consists of two pieces of calcite and they are suitably cut and stuck together using the paste Canada balsam. It's a special kind of paste. It's an adhesive. And we need to discuss one more important thing that is called Law of Malice. What is Law of Malice? I is equal to I0 cos squared theta. I is equal to I means intensity, intensity of light coming out of analyzer is equal to I naught into cos squared theta where I is equal to intensity of light coming out of analyzer. And I naught, it is the intensity of light 
falling on analyzer that is incident on analyzer So intensity of, uh, in fact, this is the intensity of polarized light and this is the intensity of unpolarized light as all. So I is equal to I0 cos squared theta. Theta is the angle between the axis of polarizer and analyzer. Theta is the angle between polarizer and analyzer that is between the axis of polarizer and analyzer let me consider the polarizer the axis of polarizer in this way and analyzer is in this direction so the angle between them is theta so here if it is theta and it is something like resolving the vector so this can be what that is a sin theta a sin theta or a o sin theta a o sin theta and this one is a o cos theta so this AO is nothing but the amplitude of light incident on analyzer. Amplitude of light incident that is falling on analyzer. Okay, that is AO. AO, suppose if it is the light and this is the wave height. This wave height is called amplitude. Amplitude. which is nothing but the wave height. Which is nothing but the wave height. So, uh, let me say that is, uh, let us arrive at a relationship. I is equal to K into K into A naught cos theta the whole square. A naught cos theta the whole square. So I is equal to K into a naught squared cos squared theta. And this I naught is nothing but k into A naught. Therefore, I this can be called I naught into cos squared theta. Okay, cos squared theta. So when we plot a graph like this, 
now i in the y axis theta in the x axis that is theta as degree so it goes in this way and it goes in this way now this is cos theta so this is the cos curve goes like this okay so what about this angle it starts from um, in fact you can draw like this okay so this is zero and this part is 90 degree and this part 180 degree 270 degree this is 180 this is 270 okay and this one is 360 and so on so what about this this is 180 and this one is 360 degree okay please note on this see now let us discuss about the method of producing plane polarized light methods of producing plane polarized light so the one is by refraction so in refraction you will get plane polarized light and also by scattering then you can also get by double refraction then by selective absorption let us see the polarization by reflection This is governed by Brusser's law. It states that the refractive index is equal to the tangent of polarizing angle. So it can be simply represented by this equation that is mu is equal to tan of polarizing angle i p let me draw the plane of reflection and this is the normal that is perpendicular line n and dash the angle of incidence the light comes here and gets refracted and partly refracted so this is the incident light this is the ref reflected light and refracted light so this is the unpolarized light so you have both plane of vibrations so this is the normal light
now one set of vibrations will be one plane polarized light will be reflected like this and another set will vibration will be reflect refracted like this do you understand so in this in that way it is separated and you must look at this angle should be 90 degree when this angle is 90 degree and of course this is this is the angle of polarization ip and uh, according to the law of reflection angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so this is also ip okay now mu is equal to tan of ip mu is equal to tan of ip and what is ip ip is the angle of polarization angle of polarization therefore and you know already mu is the refractive index mu is the refractive index of the medium transparent medium transparent medium okay now we know and uh, this is the angle of refraction is it not this is because this is normal the angle subtended by the refracted beam of light this is r is it not therefore let us calculate mu is equal to the refractor index according to snell's law sine of angle of incidence divided by sine of angle of refraction so sine of angle of incidence here ip divided by sine of angle of refraction that is r right and we know see that is this is r or able follow and this is ip okay right so this ip plus ir is equal to 90 degree do you know why because n n dash is the it it, it has a, a 180 degree you can call it n o n so n o n dash is 180 degree where you have the angle here as 90 degree so the remaining is ip plus ir that is 90 degree is it not so totally uh, let me say this is o a b right now uh, that is uh, n o n dash the angle of n o n dash is equal to 9 180 degree is equal to 180 degree follow me carefully and then here this n o n is nothing but n o n dash is nothing but that is angle of i p n o a is it not angle n o a plus angle a o b plus angle b o n n dash so that is equal to what is n o a n o a is nothing but i p plus a o b we already declared is 190 degree plus what about b o n that is r therefore and n o n we already know it is 180 degree therefore i p plus i r is equal to 90 will go this side so that you are able to get 90 degree is it clear therefore ip plus ir is equal to 90 degree are able follow so 
if it is 90 degree what about ir uh, you can say instead of ir you can put r because angle of refraction okay right so what is r here that is nothing but 90 minus ip 90 degree minus ip is it not now let us substitute the snell's law here so mu is equal to sin ip so sin ip divided by okay sin r so sin r is nothing but sin 90 minus ip so what is sin 90 minus theta cos theta so therefore sin ip divided by cos ip that is equal to tan ip and that is the equation that is Bruce's law okay so Bruce's law states that the tangent of the polarizing angle of incidence of a transparent medium is equal to its refractive index okay right now let me proceed to the next aspect polarization by scattering polarization so just now we discussed the polarization can take place by a reflection and a refraction now we are discussing by scattering See, when we look at blue portion of a sky through a Polaroid and rotate the Polaroid, transmitted light shows a rise and fall of intensity. So this shows that light from blue portion of the sky is plane polarized. And that is why when it is rotated, when the Polaroid or the polarized camera or the sunglass you can say when you slightly rotate it blocks the incoming light so sunlight gets scattered here and it encounters the molecules of its atmosphere uh, let us draw a small diagram to understand this concept now this is the sunlight okay and it gives unpolarized light At unpolarized mean, means it has both vibrations like this It has both plane of vibrations. When it is passing through the nitrogen molecule present in the atmosphere, let me say this is the nitrogen molecule. When it is passed, what happens? That is, it is scattered in this way and it reaches our eyes let me say that is we are looking from here okay so we are able to see the scattered portion only you know the scattered portions are polarized and that is why when it is rotated at one uh, angle you are able to see the bright light at an another angle it blocks so in that way it is a natural phenomenon also so scattered light this is a scattered but polarized light so scattered light it is polarized one so polarized light right and this is the eye we are looking from here okay
So all this light scattered from these molecules has only dots. So this polarized light perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Okay. So uh, this is one of the best examples. And how this uh, polarization of light, that is, uh, the polaroids, simply speaking, can be applied. So uses of polaroids. It is used in sunglasses. camera filters and it is also used in windscreens of car and even headlights are fitted with such type of polaroids and the window planes of window panes of aircraft aeroplane then it is also used 3d movies Okay, it is also used in 3D movies and uh, in fact this is used in LCD that is liquid crystal display and its photo intensity is its photo intensity not intensity, elasticity is used in photo elasticity. It means that is uh, glass and uh, some plastic materials slow double ref refraction. Double refraction. So when there is double refraction, polarization takes place particularly when these two pieces are stressed then the polarized light is passed through them and analyzed a bright color of uh, light is visible so it indicates the existence of strains okay so these are the major applications of polaroid so polarization is a very important phenomenon of light okay so thank you very much for watching this video.